Greenville, Mississippi, March 1901. The front page of the Delta Democrat Times greets readers with exciting news. The South's newest entertainment phenomenon is coming to their city. The article states, it was none other than one of those steam-powered riding galleries they call carousels in Europe, and that every beau in the county would have his sweetheart on Broadway for a beautiful night under the lights of the new merry-go-round. As the 20th century approaches, Delton share a glimmer of hope that life in the South will get better. With the Civil War a generation and one half behind them, citizens look forward to the future. Greenville is growing. The River City is expanding as a business hub, with Old Man River as the avenue to its future. Boats ply the mighty Mississippi piled high with cotton bales bound for market. Banks are thriving. A new economy is emerging and returning prosperity to the Mississippi Delta. Eli Franklin Weinman moves to Greenville in 1898 to work with his brother, who has already established the successful sawmill, the A.G. Weinman and Sons Lumber Company. Eli, already a successful businessman and traveler, has discovered something magical during one of his ventures, something he believes Greenville desperately needs. During a recent trip, Weinman has seen a carousel and, taken with its beauty, wants to purchase one and bring it to Greenville. He tells his wife, Katie, I would love to own such a beautiful thing. In March 1901, he sees a sales ad in the St. Louis Dispatch for an Armitage Herschel carousel. Eli approaches the distributor to inquire about the machine and its history. Eli learns that in 1873, Alan Herschel founded the Tonawanda Engine and Machine Company with partner James Armitage. In 1883, Herschel, excited by the carousels which were flourishing in Europe, persuaded his partners to manufacture the first steam riding gallery. The distributor explains to Eli that the carousel, being offered for sale, is one of the last Armitage Herschel carousels to be produced. Weinman recognizes he has a chance to purchase a real prize. Eli Franklin Weinman, or as my family called him, Frank Weinman. He was always known as Uncle Frank. And my grandfather moved in 1896, opened a sawmill, and in 1897, uh, Frank came down later and joined them in the sawmill business. And he purchased a lot on South Broadway, built a home there. That's where he, uh, he first uh, hatched the idea of the carousel, which he ordered in the late 1800s. And I believe it was delivered here in about 1901. And he assembled it on the side yard of his home on South Broadway. My mother and father both many times mentioned as, as children going over on Broadway and, playing on the carousel and had fond memories of it. By the late 20s, Eli's health begins to deteriorate. The carousel has lost its luster. The paint has faded. The metal is rusting. Unable to maintain his beloved prize, he sells it to his good friend, Harry Crockett, in 1934. Harry is a landowner, farmer, and one of Greenville's first African-American entrepreneurs, owning and operating a hauling company. It is on Walthall Street, in the family barn, that Mary Crockett, Harry's wife, takes on the job of restoring the fading carousel. The first thing Mary does is hire a local black artisan to repaint the wooden support parts, refurbish the chariots, and repaint the horses. The canvas top is replaced, and the storybook characters and nursery rhymes are added for decor. Harry hires Tom Hicks as the engineer responsible for firing the boiler and operating the carousel. He christens it Crockett's Merry-Go-Round and sets it up on his Delessip Street lot. Mary is pleased with the restoration except for one disappointment. The bellows on the calliope can neither be repaired nor replaced. Instead, a record player is used 
and the popular tunes of the day are played as the magical contraption turns once again. It had a loud whistle, and when they would sound the whistle, everybody in the community would know it was time to come and enjoy the Crockett merry-go-round. Citizens attempt to convince Harry to have separate nights, one for blacks and one for whites. Uh, some civic leaders came to Harry Crockett and asked him to have a separate night for blacks and whites, but he wouldn't have anything to do with it. He wanted everybody to ride the carousel at the same time. And that's exactly what happens. The carousel spins for all people, black and white, young and old, until 1952, when Harry dies at 83 years of age. Unable to maintain the carousel alone, Mary sells it to the Junior Women's Club of Greenville the following year. The landscape of Greenville has changed. The Greenville Air Base population has swelled, and military personnel have moved to the port city from across America, and even Western Europe. The art and literary scene is at its height. Meeting Shelby Foote or William Faulkner at a Hodding and Betty Carter gathering is a common occurrence. The Junior Women's Club has to decide where the carousel will fit into this burgeoning landscape. For several years now, the carousel has lived outdoors with only the canvas canopy to protect it from the elements. Nature has taken its toll. The colors have faded, the horse is in disrepair. Weinman's dream is decaying. But the Women's Club isn't ready to give up. They dedicate themselves to restoring the carousel and erecting it on a protected site. The ladies approach the city fathers with their dilemma and are given a small plot of land. The entire community is involved with the club's first fundraiser. They work tirelessly to erect a pavilion which the fire department volunteers coat with leftover paint. Early fundraising efforts include selling deeded land parcels. For a $15 donation, anyone could own one inch of the new park. Since the original Calliope had been lost, locals create a special loudspeaker system. In 1953, the carousel is placed beneath a tin canopy on a permanent steel track. Fairyland Park is open, and it is a park of dreams. I can remember birthday parties at Fairyland Park. They were wonderful, and you would have 45 minutes of joy riding the carousel as many times as you could, or the tank, or the little cart and pony ride. They were wonderful. During this time at the Fairyland Park, the members would have paint the pony days. When they noticed that the paint was wearing off the ponies, they would have a day where all the members would come and, and paint the ponies and make them fresh and beautiful. The women's club do their best to maintain the carousel, but in 1988, the carousel's hemp rope drive breaks for the last time. After having been out in the elements for over 80 years, irreparable damage has occurred. The club decides the carousel must be scrapped or totally refurbished. In the summer of 1988, a Connecticut restoration firm examines the carousel and gives an initial estimate of $350,000. In 1991, club members dismantle the horses and chariots and move them to a local car dealership. There, they proceed to strip and repaint the horses in an attempt to halt further deterioration. A gifted wood craftsman replaces the broken ears and hooves of the tattered horses. And one year later, the restored horses are given their first public viewing at an outdoor fundraiser on the parking lot of Greenville, Buick, and Cadillac. Spring of 2000, workmen from the restoration company Carousel Magic of Mansfield, Ohio, arrive in Greenville. Club members dismantle the portions of the carousel that can be restored. The parts are loaded onto trucks and shipped to Ohio. We were approached in 2005 by the Greenville Arts Council. And uh, uh, Ms. Baskins was the, uh, was the executive director at that point. Called me and said, we have a problem. She had been in contact with the Junior Women's Club and they had told her that the Carousel Magic Company in Mansfield, Ohio had come to a point where they said, we've got to either, either restore the carousel or we've got to sell the carousel or we have to give it back to you in pieces. The Delta Children's Museum purchases the carousel and its debt from the Junior Women's Club 
for one dollar. In early 2004, partners are informed that the carousel parts are continuing to deteriorate and the cost of restoration is growing. With the possibility of losing the carousel, community leaders began an all-out campaign to raise funds. Thanks to grants, fundraisers, special learning projects, and contributions from businesses and individuals, the necessary funds are raised. The primary structure of the carousel is, at last, sent to Ohio. On August 29, 2006, the restored parts of the 1901 Armitage Herschel Carousel return home to the River City. Large portions have to be rebuilt. The process is guided by carousel magic, but carried out by local craftsman and lead engineer Andy Hosowski. Engineers, businesses, contractors, artists, and private citizens donate their time and expertise to bring the carousel back to life. The total cost of restoration? $500,000. On February 17, 2007, the 1901 Armitage Herschel Carousel officially opens at its new home in E.E. E. Bass. At long last, the Delta welcomes back its architectural treasure, which had last turned in 1988. At the gala, the mayor conducts the official ribbon-cutting ceremony, surrounded by city dignitaries, board members of the Greenville Junior Women's Club, the Delta Children's Museum, and a large group of excited citizens. The high point of this entire restoration was bringing the carousel back to Greenville and we brought it back like we're in 2006, but we actually presented it to the community in February 2007. We had a carousel gala where we had a big band and, and Carl and Amanda Cottingham gave us a beautiful inauguration party to inaugurate the carousel back. We had three to 500 people in the pavilion, and so it was really a great day when it, when it came back to Greenville. The Delta Children's Museum had succeeded in its mission, but the carousel's journey was not over. Its future had to be protected. A path had to be charted for Greenville's magnificent treasure. In the late 1980s, the E.E. Bass Foundation was established, and the main role of that foundation was to renovate the old E.E. Bass uh, Junior High School and High School building. And it's kind of become the home and hub of all kind of cultural and art-related things in Greenville, Mississippi. So in 2007, when Delta Children's Museum approached Bass, they said, hey, you've got this great old gym that, you know, has been renovated, but it's just kind of sitting there, and the carousel would fit in it, because there's not many places that the carousel will fit in town, so it just kind of was this natural fit. So, in January 2010, Delta Children's Museum sells the carousel along with two restored toy rides to E.E. E. Bass Cultural Arts Center for one dollar. The Arts Center would house the carousel in a large protected auditorium and manage programs and activities to teach and entertain. Today, the carousel turns weekly within its private pavilion at the E.E. E. Bass Cultural Arts Center where visitors can interpret its nursery rhymes, walk the wooden floors, and even take a ride on one of its antique ponies. Though over 100 years old, the Armitage Herschel Carousel continues to create magic to this day, stirring memories and imagination within the souls of all its passengers, both young and young at heart. Our carousel is very unique because there are only two carousels like it in the world. One is located here in Greenville and one is located in Newfield, Maine. Both of these carousels are called country fair style carousels, which means they were produced so that they could easily be taken apart and moved. The most unique thing about uh, our carousel is the horses are, of course, all hand carved and they're made of, uh, of poplar. Uh, and all the uh, horses are put together with wooden pegs. There are no, no screws or anything of that sort.